Hello and welcome to the penultimate weekend in the Scottish Building Society Scottish Women's Premier League. We're live today from Kay Park in East Kilbride, a Celtic host for for Farmington. Second in the table versus seventh. Now 36 points separate the two sides with Celtic now unbeaten in their last 11 games. For for Farmington, meanwhile, haven't won in 11 and so have a difficult afternoon ahead of them against the side still pressing at the top of the table. At halftime, we'll hear from AC Milan's Christy Grimshaw as she prepares to play in the Coppa Italia final tonight. But with all of that to come, let's get to today's match. Here's our comments team of Polly McDonald and Stuart Mitchell. Thanks, Iona. Fran Alonso makes four changes to the side that picked up a victory against Tavernian midweek with a 1-0 win. Caitlin Hayes, who scored the goal, remains in defence. In is Kelly Clark, Rachel Donaldson, Tegan Bowie and Jacinta, who's looking to add to a recent goal against Spartans on her 10th Celtic appearance. And keep an eye on London Pollard ex-former Farmington player on the bench for Celtic. For, for Farmington, travel to East Kilbride with two changes from the side that lost out to Rangers midweek at home. Lauren Perry is back in goal after a recent injury that kept her out on Wednesday night. Hannah Stewart takes her place in attack. She replaces Summer Christie. The youngster is on loan from Celtic, so cannot play against her parent club. Donna Patterson has scored nine goals this season and she scored here in December against Celtic in the 2-2 draw earlier this season. It's a glorious day this afternoon in East Kilbride for what is a massive, massive weekend in SWPL1. The penultimate weekend as Iona just mentioned and Polly McDonald beside me in commentary. There's a bit of excitement around this this weekend, isn't there? Yeah, there certainly is. Um, I know for the, for the top three teams, you know, it's all important to, to secure three points in today's game and stay within touching distance, you know, for Rangers and Celtic in terms of those um, two Champions League places. But, you know, I think for me today, the important thing for Celtic, first and foremost, should just be, you know, the three points. Um, I know that, you know, trying to improve on goal difference will be in the back of their mind, but I think first and foremost, they need to make sure they play with intensity uh, and try and move that compact for her defence um, as early as they possibly can um, in the opening stages of the game. It is in Celtic's own hands for the Champions League place, that, that second place that's up for grabs, and they are kicking off ahead of Glasgow City, who take on Spartans in the capital later on this afternoon. How much of a benefit does playing earlier have on a side? For me, I think it's a huge benefit. Um, you, you want to, to have your game, you want to get it over the line, and they want to put that pressure onto um, Glasgow City, um, and which is obviously on later later this afternoon. So, yeah, if, if it was me, I would prefer to have the, the early kick-off as Celtic do today. Looking at today's visitors for, for Farmington, head coach Kevin McGreskin said that he was very pleased with the performance on Wednesday night against Rangers. It took Rangers quite some time to, to break the for, for defence. We've seen that a couple of times this season when they come up against the bigger sides. He's just looking for a performance to be proud of in front of the cameras this afternoon. And, of course, there's, there's still the option of them finishing sixth if they could catch Motherwell. They've already picked up a point here, so they should come in full of confidence after the performance on Wednesday and the previous result here. Yeah, I'd absolutely agree. I haven't, haven't watched Forfa. Um, I think, you know, they're, they're well drilled in terms of their defensive compact shape. Um, the challenge for me today, obviously following the loss of London Pollard, will be how they play on the counter-attack without the youngsters' pace. So I'm really looking forward to today's game. But I think for me as well, like we spoke about earlier, Donna Patterson, a key player and leader for the Forfa side today. And I think there's a lot of responsibility on some of their other senior players as, as well to try and keep in the game as long as they possibly can. Looking at the Celtic side, there seems to be changes when, when you do watch a, a Celtic side go out to take on opposition. Fran Alonso likes to tinker a little bit with his team and just see what options that he has. as different attacking options there. We've seen him do many things this season. But one of the players that will be key and had a great performance against Forfar for Farmington the last time up at Station Park was Anna Philby. She's impressed in recent weeks. She's been consistent in the Celtic side. She'll be a big player in the midfield again this afternoon. Yes, yeah, she will. And I think, you know, given the injury to Natalie Ross, um, we probably not noticed Ross missing um, so much because Philby brings real energy, similar to Lisa Robertson, but she's also got a real desire to influence and impact in their attacking play um, also. So, yeah, a very important player for them today. Also, if we bear in mind that, unfortunately, Sarah Teagarden is no longer available for Celtic for the rest of the season also. Key players such as Natalie Ross also out through injury as well, but Celtic have coped. Fran Alonso and his side have kept going. They've stayed strong and they've waited in third place. 
until the derby against Rangers recently to then pounce, pick up the three points and continue their climb towards those top two places, sitting in second place. Obviously, Champions League spot will be the first priority, you feel, for every possibility. If Glasgow City were to slip up at any point, Celtic could capitalise on that. And Captain Kelly Clark there to lead the side this afternoon. Over 190 appearances now for her. And Cassie Cowper, the former Farmington captain, also joins referee Alistair Grieve for the coin toss. Just some final instructions to both captains from the referee. You can see in the background, it's been a beautiful day so far for this early afternoon kickoff as both sets of players into the pre-match ritual. Celtic with the huddle and just in goal there, number 52, Rachel Johnston. Another start for her. She started three of the last four matches before today in three clean sheets and she's only 17 years old, Pauline. She stepped in and effortlessly took her place in, in goal for Celtic. Yeah, I think it's been a really um, exciting season for Rachel and I think that, you know, she's a player that that works tirelessly behind the scenes, doing the right things um, consistently well. And, you know, when given the opportunity, I think she's really stepped up um, and, and great to see her getting a little bit of a run for the Celtic team. And I think, you know, you know, moving forward, I think she's going to be a key player for them, not just across the, the last two games of the season pier, but also next season. You can see is a little bit of a different setup at K Park for this afternoon's match. Celtic have been able to welcome fans and family, sorry, and friends of the the players this afternoon which means the two technical areas on the far side are used with the substitutes spaced out with the coaches as for for Farmington ready to get us underway do we have a shock in store like we did in December and for for Farmington travelled to K Park and picked up a point where Celtic had to fight back with two late goals as the players continue to show their support for the fight against racism. Anna Stewart about to get us underway. You can see the line of four for Farmington players already to rush into the Celtic half and get on a quick attack. It's Kilcoyne, Rennie. Four for starting fast, Rennie in for the challenge. Anna Philby gets things going now for the hosts. Donaldson on that right side can play all over the, the pitch it feels like sometimes Rachel Donaldson Lisa Robertson good space for Ewan starting out on the left wing looking to get in a nearly cross half cleared Jacinta might pick up and three has to get out of the way Robertson takes over misplaces the pass as there's Leah White trying to find Hannah Stewart. Caitlin Hayes thinks it over for Philby. And flag up for offside. And in the first minute, it feels like a fast start from both sides, Pauline. Yeah, it definitely does. Um, I think, like I mentioned earlier, I think that's going to be key for Celtic today. It's not the biggest pitch um, here at K Park. And I think what will be really important is the wide players trying to stay as wide as they possibly can to stretch that defence. Um, potentially going 1v1 in the wide areas or looking to play in between for the likes of Philby and Jacinta um, to go to go ab above and beyond Lee. We have seen in, in recent matches, Motherwell were the visitors here not so long ago in front of our cameras and put in a good performance and they, they were able to have a couple of quick breaks in the first half up the left side. What kind of things are key for Forfar to try and make that happen this afternoon? Um, for me, you know, when, when they do turn the ball over, it's important that they manage to hold on to it, you know, for more than two or three passes. Um, and I think, obviously, if they can get the ball up, up to the striker and then get the support, um, that was something that, you know, Motherwell did well on a couple of occasions, but sometimes they just lacked the legs to get the support up. So the game came back, came back upon them. An early yellow card for Leo White. And maybe one that was... Worthwhile if Forfar can see through this set piece just outside the box on that right corner. Lisa Robertson ready to stand over and an early yellow card for a Forfar defender. Isn't something that will be looked at too likely for the remaining 87 minutes. What can Lisa Robertson deliver here for Celtic? 
Caitlin Hayes, the goal scorer. Number 18, second from the back, looking. There's the header from her. Claims for the corner kick. Referee has a look and consults the assistant and awards the goal kick for Lauren Perry to take, but not too far away from Celtic on that occasion. No, it wasn't, but for me, you know, if, if what I'm seeing is right there, it's fantastic defensive play by Donna Patterson to, to challenge there because I think if, if Hayes gets a touch on that unopposed, um, it's in the back of the net. So, yeah, I think for me, Forfa really try not to concede. Um, corners or, or kind of um, free kicks against within that final third will be a key part of, the, of today's game plan. Lauren Perry, the goalkeeper, just acknowledging the defensive work as the ball was cleared from the penalty area. Something that will be key. And we expect Donna Patterson to be heavily involved in both sides of the game, defending and attacking for four for this afternoon. There's Tegan Bowie looking up the line. Good interception by Alana Bruce. Bowie with the throw. Manages to find Jacinta after a couple of attempts. Here's Caitlin Hayes. Drilling that one through. Nice turn from Sarah Ewans. Gets the shot away and tucks it into the side netting. That is fantastic movement from Sarah Ewans. And she adds to her goal tally this season. That's 12 now in the league campaign. And Celtic with a fast start. Only four minutes gone. Celtic won for, for Farmington now. The spin and turn and the delicate finish. No problem for Sarah Ewans. Fran Alonso delighted. And that's just the quality that Sarah Ewans can show, Pauline. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why she's sitting, you know, second top in terms of goal scorers in SWPL1 um, today. But I think it's a great pick out by Hayes, but also great awareness um, by Ewan in terms of where the defender was and, and the spin and the execution um, to finish. And, you know, it's a perfect start um, for Celtic here today. Five goals in her last four league games against Forfar Farmington, which stretches back to the start of the 2019 season. So she makes that six and five at the moment. And plenty of time to add if she wishes. But the beautiful spin from the Celtic attacker, Forfar Farmington, looking to respond as Ewans takes over. Jacinta now looks wide. Rachel Donaldson with lots of room in front. Coin trying to get back. Donaldson crosses. Cowper helps it in. And the touch just wide from Philby. Just found herself in the right spot. And Celtic look like they mean business this afternoon. Yeah, absolutely. It's a fantastic um, switch of play by Jacinta there and really positive running by uh, Rachel Donaldson. And you know, there was a call for a penalty, but I would probably need to see that back to confirm if, if that was uh, right or not. But you know what? We spoke about it earlier, and I think. For me, really, really important that, that Celtic try and dictate the intensity um, of today's today's game. Celtic, the corner. Palmed away, but still in a dangerous area. Craig with the volley, charged down, helps it in once more, and Perry can take. That'll be a good moment for Forfar for Farmington to just hold the ball and try and calm things down. I'm sure the last thing Kevin McGreskin wanted was to lose an early goal. Yeah, absolutely. But I think, you know, all credit to for I think both set plays, they've actually defended well and been very aggressive in terms of attacking the ball. Celtic look to go again. Hayes looking for Ewans. The two 11s will do battle on that side. Ewans claims but continues. Cuts it back for Lee. And that is over the bar. And I you do feel she should be doing better there, maybe. Yeah, I think uh, you c we can see already that a key part of today's game plan for Fran is to really try and exploit uh, the wide areas in 1v1 situations, whether it be Ewans or Donaldson up against the four for fullbacks. But for me there, yeah, the, the, finish, the finish is poor and really has to do better and at least get it on target. Four Celtic goals so far for Mariah Lee, the 24-year-old, got her last against Spartans just over 10 days ago. As Lauren Perry restarts. Chance for Forfar to come forward. Ball looking for Charlotte Gammy. Flag stays down, but the ball will run out of play. It's a good idea there by Donna Patterson, but probably just too straight um, for Gammy to get onto 
um, as well. Back with pace for Robertson. Bowie. Back for Robertson. Celtic will try and stretch things to the other side. Caitlin Hayes looks long. Craig heads on and flag up for the throw on the far side. Celtic unable to keep that one in play. You can just feel the urgency though from the home side, Pauline. Fran Alonso just applauding his team on a, a little bit more for the, the attack down that right side. But sometimes at, at K Park, Celtic could start a little bit slow and get frustrated, but there's certainly no signs of that this afternoon. No, definitely not. I think they've made a very good um, start to today's game. And, you know, why wouldn't they? I'm sure the confidence and the energy that's flowing through the group at the moment um, is one that's extremely positive. And, you know, when you're in this position, you just want the games to come um, thick and fast. And that's been reflected in the opening minutes of today's game. Break for four for Farmington as the foul throw awarded to Celtic. So they take over possession. Here's Hayes. Chloe Craig. A touch for Rachel Johnston, 17-year-old goalkeeper. Gives the ball to Captain Kelly Clark. Goes long looking for Bowie. Bowie in behind the defence. Bruce having to come across. Trying to push Bowie into a corner. Bruce will pick up, but Celtic have it again. Lisa Robertson. Cross for Craig. Mariah Lee has Bowie on the right. Mia White does well to try and intercept. Uh, pushes Celtic back. Good position by the full back there, Stuart. And I think what you can see just now is Hoffer actually doing really well to keep Celtic um, in front of them. I think the danger comes when, when they concede that space in behind. And Alana Bruce there knew she had Sarah Ewans behind so I have to just get that one clear from the penalty area. Celtic restart quickly. Ewins lifts it over. No one at the back post. Can Lee get there? Patterson heads away. Leah White just waits. Patterson in again. Can't get that clear. Can Celtic get their break? Corner awarded. And Forfer just unable to get out of their own area. Yeah, they were. But, you know, fair play to Donna Patterson. She doesn't give up give up the, the, the cause there and you know worst case scenario they can they can see the corner but um, yeah the game definitely coming upon them um, in terms of Celtic's possession um, and their, their half of the pitch Chloe Craig Kelly Clark in and around the penalty area for the corner Kelby signals at the front post the header going over the bar goal kick awarded Forfer just need to try and get possession of the ball just to gain some confidence after losing that early goal and just settle back into their shape again. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, if they're struggling or um, to, to maintain possession, I think the important thing to do is identify the space in behind Celtic, given the line that they're playing, and at least, you know, get Celtic turned um, and back, back to their own goal so they can move the team um, up the pitch. Otherwise, they'll end up playing deeper and deeper. And, and with that, I think... Um, will come more goals um, and more attacking opportunities for Celtic. Just saw Hannah Stewart and Chloe Craig about to battle for the four for Farmington throw-in. Another might come through to Gami. Back on her feet. Caitlin Hayes with a bit of space to work things again. Long once more. Headed away by Cowper. The four for Farmington. Captain of this afternoon, vice captain of the club, Nicola Davidson, the club captain on the bench. He's been making her way back after a lengthy injury. Cowper, an experienced player for four for Farmington at such a young age. And Jacinta's pass back to the throw and taker. Chloe Craig is off, and that will just allow four for Farmington to edge out of their own half if they can. thing that Kevin McGreskin has said especially after Wednesday night against Rangers was that he does feel that sometimes when his side lose the first goal the heads can go down the confidence dips and that's something that they're trying to work on getting over and he'll be looking to see progress from that after losing 
early goal to Celtic and Siri Ewans after four minutes this afternoon. He's charging over the halfway line. Puts it over, looking for Jacinta. Bruce's clearance will dip into the back of the net. And when your luck's against you, it's certainly against you. And Celtic haven't had to do much there. Alana Bruce trying to get it clear and somehow loops it over her own goalkeeper. And it's Celtic 2, for for Farmington 0. Yeah, that's an unfortunate one for Forfar there. However, I think, you know, for me, the, the, the space between the lines and the team there probably made it a little bit easier um, for Celtic. I think, you know, if you want to try and press from the front, you need to go collectively um, as a group. So, yeah, an unfortunate situation, um, but I'm sure a delightful one um, for Celtic. Lana Bruce, an experienced player. And she'll be looking to recover from that. But Celtic... Delighted with only 13 minutes gone at K Park, 2 0 in front. As they look to cement a Champions League spot by finishing at least second. And as much as Celtic might not openly speak about it, there will be hopes that they could just do their own job and hope that either Spartans or rivals, Rangers even, can help out. And Celtic looking to claim the SWP a one title this season. Still a long way to go in this one, though. Only two goals to the good at the moment. And Lauren Perry, Northern Ireland International, collects that one. You just mentioned earlier as well, Pauline, about Kevin McGreskin looking for his side just to compete and keep the confidence when they've lost the first goal, but how do you account for something like that second goal happening to your side? Yeah, unfortunately you can't, uh, but you know, I think, you know, the important thing is there's a long, long way left in the game, so um, Kevin will be relying on, you know, the experienced players, Alana Bruce, Cassie Cowper, Donna Patterson, um, to really pull the group together uh, and look to, I think the important thing is, you know, they don't concede across the next five or, five or ten minutes and try and get themselves back in the game, and the only way they can do that is if they're really compact defensively um, and focused. It's a cracking start for Chloe Craig and Celtic, though. And they're about to go in the search for a third. Mia White rushing in to head away. Craig steps forward, White's clearance, and a bit of a deflection bouncing towards the penalty area. And Forfar concede the free kick on Anna Philby. That's another delightful position to put an effort on goal or to just try and clip it to the back post for the defenders. Yeah, it definitely is, and I just spoke a little bit there about, you know, focus and concentration, and it's just a little bit erratic um, in that situation, and like you say, a, a really dangerous position um, for Celtic. And Lisa Robertson loves a long-range shot as well. Does she fancy stepping up to hit this one? It looks like a good angle. Robertson steps up, clipped over the bar. Wasn't too far away as it was dipping just towards the end. Lauren Perry moving over to that near post just to make sure. Yeah, it was a half decent effort by uh, Lisa Robertson, but I think for me it would have had to be inch perfect because we know the capabilities of, of Lauren Perry. Very, very accomplished um, young goalkeeper and has been a key player on a number of occasions for four for this season. Over the first quarter of an hour, at K Park, Celtic 2, 4 for Farmington 0. Lauren Perry with the goal kick. Off Anna Philby last and 4 for Farmington will have the throw. Alana Bruce appeared in all but one game for 4 for Farmington this season. That was a 1-1 draw against Hearts in April. Celtic will concede another throw. trying to help it towards Rennie. Robertson for Bowie for Celtic. Captain Kelly Clark for Caitlin Hayes. That sharp ball through the middle again. Lee takes over looking for Jacinta. Bruce takes it down looking for Stewart. Ball gets through to Stewart. And for getting to the Celtic penalty area here. Cammy goes looking for an attack partner, but the pass just behind, and that one needed to be played in the run in front. 
Yeah, just a little bit more composure on that execution of the pass there by Gami, but it was actually a decent opportunity for, for a, a counter-attacking situation for Forford, and it's just those fine details, Stuart, that they need to find that composure um, in possession. Chloe Craig. You might remember, made a 200 appearance a couple of games ago against Harps. A 3-0 victory over in the capital. For, for Farmington, about to go on the attack, Donna Patterson for White, White goes for early cross, away by Hayes, Erin Rennie now, can't get that through, Celtic with a chance to counter, but Patterson steps in, and helped up, hoping for a run into the channels from an attacker, but an opportunity to try and press Celtic in here, and Alonso just setting the side up, Try and allow Celtic to move up into the four for Farmington half. Hey, There's Kevin Negreski. Negreskin is looking to make a bit of a change. Alana Bruce is making her way towards the far touchline. And I did notice when she cleared the ball earlier on this near left side, she did take a little bit of a sore one afterwards, and that's maybe a, a bit of an injury issue there for, for, for Farmington with Alana Bruce going off, but you're losing a player of experience in her as well. Yeah, that would be very disappointing for Forfar um, in this early stages of the game. Like you say, a, a really experienced player, and, um, you know, it's, it's a young player that replaces her, and, and it's, you know, a, a forced um, change um, in the employment of players and not something that Kevin would have wanted. Um, against such a kind of confident um, and positive Celtic team that we see today. We'll have a look at the potential reshuffle from the visitors, but it was Charlotte Taylor who entered the field. A former former for Farmington under-15s player now in the first team. She's featured in the last nine games as Stuart trying to help that one into the penalty area, but nobody there. I actually think that she wanted to try and hit a, hit a shot from there, Stuart, but um, I think she's, she's rushed the execution of it. Celtic move forward. Rachel Donaldson looking to go past Kilcoyne. Cowper clears. All the way through to Hayes unchallenged. Finds Philby. Turns. Cross towards Philby again. She'll try to recover and help forward. It'll be a tough job for Hannah Stewart up there to chase those clearances. Bowie for Celtic again. Sarah Ewans now. Bench Jacinta with the pass. She's round Cowper and Warren Perry just manages to fall on the ball. And it remains Celtic 2 for, for Farmington now. Good save there by Perry. Um, I think good, good footwork in, in combination play. Um, from Sarah Ewens and Jacinta, and Jacinta obviously just trying to get that cut back across the face of goal. Warren Perry was nominated for the SWPL April Player of the Month. Which Rangers player Brogan Hay eventually won after the voting. There's Caitlin Hayes, the goal scorer in the 1-0 win against Hibs on Wednesday night. Looking for Stewart, headed away by Robertson. Helped back up. Taylor with the touch. It's good work from Patterson just to hold off the challenge. Cowper forward, headed away. Patterson once more. Battling with Philby. Robertson looking to release Ewens. A little bit behind, so has to wait on the ball. Celtic getting players forward here. It's a nice pass slipped through. And a good challenge. The last gasp from Cassie Cowper. She reads the situation well there, you know, and, and, and times times the tackle also, but you can see, you know, the number of players that Celtic are trying to, to throw forward. So, so, so important that the recovery of the four for players um, match those runs. Celtic set up for another set piece. Craig, Hayes, Clark, all there. Bill 
will be signals once more. Headed away. Jacinta thinks about it. And cleared again. Stuart looking to bring this down and try and hold up. The ball for four for Farmington. Ball forward in search of Gami. He's has that long ball once more, looking to get Philby in behind. Perry comes out. Flag up on the far side from the assistant. Offside. And Forfer just managed to get through that one again. Yeah, it's good, good reading of the game and positioning by uh, Laura Perry in that situation. How do you feel Kevin McGreskin sides fair? I mean, 10 minutes ago since they lost their own goal and they've settled a little bit more, it seems. Yeah, they definitely have. And... In some transitional moments, they've actually managed to keep the ball for, you know, the, the short passing, but it's when they try and then execute the long ball into striker that they're failing uh, with the position or, or the, the first touch of the striker um, then turns the ball over again. So that would be my key focus um, for them at this moment. Taylor's header looking for Stewart. Runs out of play. Mitchell Johnson gets us going again quickly. Sarah Alonso has been really impressed with the young goalkeeper. Said she's great with her feet and has been great communi communicating with the other players in front of her this season. And Hayes picks up the ball for Celtic. You see the rush of players in the green and white hoops moving forward, but four for farming can have it here. And Stewart done everything right there until the final pass. For me, Gami has to position just a little bit higher there and prevent that ball um, going out the other side. Otherwise, it's a hard shift back and forth across the pitch. Challenge between Philby and Lisa Ryan. Celtic come out with the ball. Here's Tegan Bowie. Came on as a late sub on Wednesday. Her first appearance since the game we brought you against Harps in Edinburgh. Hayes looks for Chloe Craig. An opportunity to move down that right side. Looks for Lee. Turns Lee away brilliantly. Moving at speed. Donaldson, can she deliver? Claims the ball across the line. And the assistant agrees. And four for Farmington will have the goal kick. But some dangerous running from Mariah Lee there. Yeah, and we've seen that before, haven't we? Extremely quick and, you know, very good technical ability in the way that she moves and manipulates the ball. But... Yeah, probably disappointing in terms of the final outcome there that they can't get um, a cut back back across goal. Perry to restart. Patterson trying to win the aerial battle. Or for Farmington have the ball. Looking down the left side. Can Stuart get there? Craig able to sweep up. Back to Johnston. Caitlin Hayes has started the last three matches for Celtic. Today's number four in a row. Clark's pass eventually gets through to Ewins. Bowie, pass and move. Ewins goes long. I'm not sure whether that was a shot or expecting a run forward from Philby, but it's your brimming with confidence from an earlier yeah. goal here, Polly, maybe? Uh, I think whatever it was, uh, it, it didn't come off. I think probably the ball there for me is either... Um, into, into feet in terms of Philby or into Tegan Bowie and maybe just Sarah Ewans just gets a little bit excited there. Here is Sarah Ewans again. Asking for the movement. Flips over the top for Donaldson. Races past Leah White. Ball over the top and that's a good save in the end from Lauren Perry. It was coming at pace and she manages to get the touch and put it over the bar. Yep, I think uh, from Sarah Ewan's perspective, she's made amends there. It's a fantastic through ball to Donaldson, and yeah, great save, great save by Lauren Perry. We do see Sarah Ewan's playing through the middle in the attack a lot for Celtic, but she's just as effective out in the wide areas and has the quality to deliver those passes. It's Lisa Robertson on the far side will look for her attacking teammate. 
We're standing in front of the four for Farmington goalkeeper. Corner delivered. It's nodded in. And it's a third goal from Chloe Craig. And Celtic are cruising here at K Park as they look to keep things going and their unbeaten run. Celebrations with Kiva Keenan, who's not in the squad this afternoon. And Chloe Craig in on the goal haul against Forfar Farmington. That's our ninth goal of the season, and it's Celtic 3, Forfar Farmington now. And she's right place, right time, and willing to put her head in there. And, you know, it's a, a familiar name on the team sheet for Celtic this year. Um, so, yeah, well done, Chloe, Chloe Craig. And, you know, I think Celtic will feel like in a better position now um, because they've had a number of, of uh, corners for, and we know that it's definitely one of their strengths. So, yeah, better position for Celtic to continue to build on now for them. It's the usual suspects scoring for Celtic against four for Farmington. Chloe Craig, five goals in her last five league meetings against four for Farmington from that 2019 season. And she's added to that, making it six and six with a perfectly placed header. And if it's not even hitting the half hour yet, Celtic go looking for more. It'll be for Hayes. It's not a bad return for, for a fullback stroke centre back, is it? <laughs> and we have spoke about how she has missed some games this season. Chloe Craig, Ewan's looking to go on the charge again and quickly once more with the throw. Lisa Robertson. Lee for Jacinta. It was a little bit quiet earlier from the Celtic players, but now that third goal's went in. You could hear the volume picking up again. Lee from long range, but doesn't quite catch that one. And you can just sense a little bit of the, the need for goals from the home side at the moment, Pauline. There's a lot of communicating, a lot of shouting from the sides at three. Celtic want more. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a, it's a convincing performance um, so far from Celtic. They've dominated the play. They've had numerous, you know, good um, attacking opportunities. But there's no doubt about it that in their mind, they'll be trying to, you know, within today's game, get as close to Glasgow City's goal difference, if, if not match it. Erin Rennie moving in for the challenge for Forfar. Celtic have the throw. The goal scorer of the third, Chloe Craig, will take. 66 goals now for Chloe Craig in a Celtic shirt. There's Captain Kelly Clark. Lisa Robertson. Jacinta. Bursting inside as you see her do so often. Hayes looking long again. Oh, might get through. Leah White has to move back. Donaldson crosses, but Leah White does well to prevent. Somehow gets all the way through to Jacinta. She moves right. And a good save from Perry with the right foot. Bowie trying to take it down. Celtic turning up the pressure. Ewins lashes that one in. Headed away by Ryan. Landed a little bit awkwardly in the clearance. Jacinta now. And Ryan there again to block. And four for Farmington in a bit of danger of just closing in in their own penalty area here. Yeah, but, you know, see, for me in that situation, it's, it's the wrong choice by Jacinta. The, shot's, the shot is not on, the angle's too tight, and it's the cutback, which potentially would have put Celtic 4-0 up. So a little bit disappointing in terms of her decision-making there, uh, from my perspective. Corner Celtic. Clark, Lee and Craig all waiting. Here he runs short. Cross to the back. Clark's there. Just ducking a little bit. Didn't maybe see the full flight of the ball. And over it goes. Or for Farmington goal kick. And it remains 3-0 to Celtic. Yeah, it's a well-worked corner there by Celtic. And you see what they're trying to do. Just change uh, the angle of the ball into the box. But unfortunately, it's a little bit over-hit in terms of um, the run of Hayes to try and get on the end of it. One SWPL clean sheet this season against Harps in November. Won't be getting another this afternoon. But we're hoping that Harner defence together for the away side can keep the score line down to see if there's any way back for the visitors. Back for Robertson. Chloe Craig. 
Traffic making good use of this long ball. Lee nips in. Perry's come out and Lee finishes into the back of the net. And Celtic moving quickly from defence to attack. And it's a fourth goal in this first half. And it's Mariah Lee with her fifth Celtic goal. It's Celtic four, four for Farmington now. Goalkeeper maybe didn't have to come. And it gave Mariah Lee an open goal. And she finished it perfectly for Celtic. Yeah, I think a little bit of maybe miscommunication there between the four for backline and goalkeeper. But I think there's, you know, you can't take it away from Chloe Craig. It's a fantastic. Um, weighted pass forward and a really good movement and, and execution of the finish by Mariah Lee. I've already mentioned the usual suspects in goal scoring. Mariah Lee had a double against Forfar in the game up at Station Park recently with almost identical back post headers. That one very different, but it is Celtic. And the names that Forfar Farmington will be beginning to dislike seeing on the score sheet. Celtic don't care. The goals may count as it comes to the final weekend. And Tegan Bowie trying to get in again. Taylor. Nobody around to help out. Robertson lifting it over. That's a lovely pass for Bowie. Bowie with the cross across goal. And there's the touch from Donaldson, but over the bar. And the ball was just asking to be put into the back of the net yet again for Celtic. Yeah, it definitely was. Fantastic work there by Lisa Robertson and, and Tegan Bowie manages to get the cross, uh, the ball across goal and, you know, Donaldson will probably, probably feel a little bit aggrieved that she, she doesn't do better and at least gets that on target. Does the push away from Lauren Perry put her off there, do you think? Quite possibly, yep. It could have been a difficult one for the goalkeeper also as the ball bounced just before as she was going to ground. It doesn't matter how you keep it out as long as you do as a goalkeeper. Let me give four for Farmington the chance to move forward here. Gammy gives chase. You can see what Donna Patterson's trying to do there, but for me, they need to try and play the ball um, into feet. I think, you know, in terms of a foot race between the four for the Celtic players, Celtic are always going to edge it. It's a few times we've seen that from the visitors so far, and it's just either been behind the player and it's run a bit too far forward. Yeah, absolutely. And it's frustrating, you know, when you're playing in a game like this and you have these opportunities and they're, they're few and far between, but you need to try and make the, the most of them. Otherwise, they just become energy draining. One thing we have already witnessed that's working for Celtic is the defence. Caitlin Hayes, Kelly Clark playing those long balls over the top for the runs forward. It seems to be causing, especially for a couple of the goals at least, for, for Farmington, quite a bit of trouble. Yeah, it is, and I think, you know, all credit to Celtic that they've shown good variation in their attacking play, and they're identifying the moments, or the key moments, where the space is, um, and behind, or in potentially in the wide areas, or where they've stretched the back line, and they can play passes um, in between. Jacinta's pass trickles through for Cassie Cowper, looking in the middle for Hannah Stewart. But she can't take over possession. Donaldson for Hayes. will be looking forward. Lee on the run, but the flag raised on the far side again. I think it's a good idea by Anna Philby there, but just the, the final execution is obviously too too hard and, and, in my opinion, too too straight also. And, you know, Lee probably needs to just show a little bit more awareness in terms of her understanding of where the for her back line is also. He's happy to move backwards. Kelly Clark to construct for Celtic. Hayes. There's that ball over the top again. Sarah Ewens is in behind. Ryan heads away. Philby again. With a spectacular volley. Crashes off the bar. Sarah Ewens with the header. And that just wide. But it wouldn't have counted as the flag again up on the far side. And Celtic just moving up the gears again. Yeah, they are, and I think, you know, for me, for her in terms of their back line, they need to identify when, when that long um, kind of pass is coming. And, and just now you can see Sarah Ewens having, having the, the kind of foot ahead of, of the other centre-back. Obviously, she doesn't get the shot off, but the effort from, from Anna Philby probably deserves a goal. The technique was tremendous. 
and it may have ended up in the back of the net if not for the crossbar coming to save for, for Farmington. Sarah Ewans, long range, looking for the shot, pushed away by Perry. And the confidence soaring through Celtic at the moment with these efforts from outside the area. I think it's important for danger. me, Stuart, that, you know, we've seen maybe a few times now that Celtic have continually tried that long ball. And I think the reason they've been effective from it prior to that was because there was variation and it was about picking, picking the correct moment, moment. So I hope that, you know, they potentially don't go on to just become a little bit one-dimensional because I think that probably isn't the way they, they should attack... Um, play out Probably. the rest of this game if they really want to catch Glasgow City in terms of goals scored. Philby's corner pushed away by Perry once more and the corner will be taken from the opposite side now. Unchallenged the for for Farmington goalkeeper manages to push that one over the touchline. Lisa Robertson moves over be there short as well. Robertson's cross towards Hayes. High up and over the bar, but Alistair Grieve says that one was off a blue shirt last. Another corner for Celtic, and they'll be looking with just a few minutes to go until half time to try and add to their goal tally. Robertson sends it in. Headed away strongly. Rennie can clear. Robertson high towards the back. Hayes is there. And a free kick awarded against the Celtic defender. Four for Farmington free kick. I think you have to give real credit to four for Celtic. have had a, a large number um, of corners now. And I think, you know, their defensive setup and their aggression and desire to try and win the ball um, has been commendable. Charlotte Taylor at the back post for the away side doing the defending. She was playing for Scotland's under-14s back in the summer of 2019. So big steps up towards the four for Farmington first team. But Kevin McGreskin has been very, very happy with her performances stepping in. Very comfortable making that early change with Alana Bruce going off. And Charlotte Taylor moving in. The Celtic move forward. Jacinta trying to reach. She can't get there. We're just under five minutes going towards half time. Pauline, what will the two managers be thinking for the half time team talk? I'm, I'm going to say it's pretty easy to say it's going to be a more difficult one for Kevin McGreskin. Yeah, it definitely is. And, you know, I think the most important thing is, you know, that they'll have set out their stall in terms of what the aims and objectives were for the game. And I would imagine it would be performance um, objectives because they know where they're at. And the important thing probably for them just now is, is looking at the performances and, and where they can make um, small gains, you know, in preparation um, for next season. Or for half a throw. Williams, 29 last month. Still an important player for Celtic, as she has been so many times. Claims of handball, waved away from the referee. White steps in, Donaldson goes past. It's been sent wide, Rachel Donaldson. We'll have to go around the defender once more. Gets the delivery, Perry's there and collects. Commanding goalkeeping yet again from Lauren Perry. Yeah, definitely. It's a good run across the face of the goalkeeper by Sarah Ewans, but yep, she stands tall and brave there and collects again um, for her team. Also in the scoring charts this season, as you might remember, for that free kick against Hearts. Taken down by Kelly Clark. Taylor as well to hold up, looking to zip it through for Stewart. He's intercepts. Sent towards Jacinta. Lee moving on the left. Jacinta has a look up. Good cross in. It might come through to Bowie. She has to get it under control. Robertson. Ewan's with the header off target. But just stepped in front of Lisa Ryan to make contact with the ball. For 
first time cross from Lisa Robertson. Sarah Younes knew exactly what was happening, but just in the wrong place to try and divert it towards Lauren Perry and that net. for Lee Ryan there manages to put the Celtic attacker off Rennie gets in front of Robertson chance for four for Farmington here Hannah Stewart has killed coin ahead Stewart looks up tries to get the ball through and Rachel Johnston hasn't done too much this afternoon not many efforts thrown towards her, but she was quick off her line there to collect. Yeah, she reads that situation very well. It's actually a really good angle of pass from Hannah Stewart, but unfortunately Kilcoyne just um, doesn't quite have the legs, and Rachel Johnson's positioning is, is positive for Celtic. Lisa Robertson just a toe away there from getting the ball under control. Good work from Celtic. Moving forward once again. Everything clicking for them this afternoon. In this first 45 minutes. Perry goes long. He's with a bullet header upfield, but can't find a Celtic shirt. Patterson trying to get the ball back. Taylor in there. Robertson looking to change the angles. Back towards Caitlin Hayes. Storms forward again. Direct ball through for Lee. Mariah Lee battles. It's Anna Philby. And that's in the back of the net once again for Celtic. And they've added another before half time. Just what Fran Alonso and his Celtic girls wanted. And it's a beautiful finish. From Philby, and it's Celtic 5, 4 for Farmington now. We're talking about them having an easier team talk just a few moments ago, Pauline, about much easier now. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it's probably everything Fran had in mind for his team. Um, you know, I think, like you say, everything will be positive. Every, play, every Celtic player will come out in the second half confident. Very, very different team talk um, for Kevin and the four for players. And for me, just in that last situation, just very, very exposed in the middle of the pitch and too easy um, for Celtic to play through. Celtic are cruising in the first half here at K Park against four for Farmington. Kevin McGreskin has a job in his hands with the halftime team talk to try and pick things up and motivate his players for the second 45 minutes. But Fran Alonso's side won't need much motivating with the way things have gone so far in this first half. A group of goals, and at half-time, it's Celtic 5, 4 for Farmington now. Well, a really confident start here for Celtic at K-Park. Five goals to nil against four for Farmington. Paul McDonald joins me now. I mean, a really great start for Celtic. How would you assess that first half? Um, you know, like you say, it's, it's probably perfect in terms of the game plan that, that they had in mind. Sometimes it's not always easy when at the back of your mind you're thinking about trying to, to close upon um, Glasgow City and, and, and look to re, um, reassure that the goal difference situation doesn't hinder you um, after next week's game. But, you know, I think the variation in their attacking play is something that's been really, really important and the intensity in play in this first half. Well, goals are hugely important when it comes to these last kind of two match days of the season, if Cel especially if Celtic really want to press for that top spot. You can see the intensity. They are just completely on one today. Yeah, definitely. And I think probably what's also pleasing for Fran is that he's, ha he's receiving players giving goals from all aspects or all areas of the pitch, um, should I say. So I think now, statistically, they're only four behind Glasgow City, which... Um, I'm sure that will definitely be in their minds when they come out to start the second half. Very interesting. Well, we will talk more shortly about this game and what's to come. But before then, what a first season in Italy for Kirkcaldy-born Christy Grimshaw. She plays in the Coppa Italia final tonight with AC Milan and Tyrone Smith caught up with her earlier in the week. For 
us, I think what we need to do this season especially is because it is such a big club and like you said, um, the history of the men's side is huge. Uh, we needed to do something, I think, just in obviously qualifying for the Champions League and the men's side have actually done that as well. We've both finished second, um, I think. So now we're considered, like I think they just, they're proud of us as well. You know, we're making history now and we're kind of building on that and we've been successful now. So I think obviously we've just given them no reason to not, you know, like think of us as really successful as well. And um, But it's actually saying that they do in, include on us a lot where they do like regard us as just as important. Really, they treat us exactly the same, which is really, that's what I love being, about being here as well. So it's good. No, really successful, like really successful. I know I've used that word a lot, but kind of sums up obviously how it has been. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's gone so fast. So time flies when you're having fun. And no, yeah, just, I mean, I love being here and I love, it's pretty much a dream job. So it's been very good for me the last year. I really enjoy it. It's like a nice relaxed, you know, like when you imagine yourself on holiday in Italy, like it's pretty much the same as that really. Um, but with COVID, obviously it's been a bit difficult to kind of go out and enjoy um, and be able to explore as much. But when we have at the time, um, it's great. I love the food, I love the culture. So yeah, no, it's been pretty easy to adapt and settle in. And what about the, I mean, we see often, you know, it's the classic footballer image of a referee getting berated. Have you learned all the phrases in Italian? <laughs> yeah, I try not to listen to them ones because they're not <laughs> the best Italian. Now that you've had this season under your belt and you've played a number of games and you've qualified for the Champions League, you've got cup final to, to look forward to. Um, I mean, do you feel that it's, you're getting the kind of it exposes the... the Probably not the right word, but do you do you feel that you're you're still, despite all of that, you're still going under the radar a little bit? Um, I know what you mean. Yeah, I think obviously when you are out of the UK, it is still, you know, like difficult to be known as much in the UK because uh, British football is but in the league, obviously in England and Scotland. Um, it's very big, like in England, especially the WSL. So they get a lot of coverage, like in Europe, you know. But like I said, obviously the Italian league is getting so much better, but um, it's still yet to be there. Um, like as big as obviously the WSL and, and, you know, like in France and everything as well. So yeah, I think the league still, and me personally, yeah, like a little bit under the radar, but. Um, like I said, next year I think it'll get better and better and over the next years it'll be one of the biggest, so hopefully that'll change. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I mentioned earlier on, do you feel like you're part of something in terms of what, what um, you know, AC Milan are doing in terms of the ladies football, but do you get a sense in terms, just in terms of the, the, the ladies league as a whole in, in Italy that it, you know, it is got the potential to rival any of the other you know, women's leagues in the world and, and sooner rather than later? Definitely. No, definitely. I mean, now that in, now that we've got, like, us in the Champions League as well, like, we've got Juventus who um, are just bringing in better players as well, like, year in and year out, and we, us as well. Um, so when, we're, we, when we can start competing in the Champions League, you know, which we're, which we're obviously achieved now, um, then obviously Europe can see that it Italian football clubs can really compete now and they're getting better and stronger. So I'm hoping obviously next season will be that year that we can really make a statement. In terms of Scotland, I mean, you're 25, um, you've still got a lot of years uh, ahead of you playing at the, at the top level. Where, where does Scotland playing for the national side rank and what, what you hope to achieve? In, and, you know, has there been any contact, you know, or any suggestions over the last 12 months that, you know, a call-up might be coming? Um, yeah, obviously, actually, like, since we last talked, um, there has been um, contact and I know I'm doing all the right things and that's pretty much all I can do, really. Um, 
so hopefully yeah hopefully that'll come and obviously it is 100% in my uh, goal list to do list so hopefully that will come but I know I've been told I'm doing all the right things and that I'm on the right path so that oh, I just need to focus on me and what I'm doing you know for Milan and hopefully that will come just control what you can control and like I said I know that I'm doing all the right things you know and I'm working hard and I'm doing everything I can for Milan so I'm doing everything that I can control and I can't control other people's decisions so um, I think if I just keep continue doing that then um, good things will come obviously. AC Milan's Christy Grimshaw there speaking to Tyrone Smith. I mean, Pauline, it's great hearing about her career out in Italy. Is she someone we'd maybe expect to see in a Scotland squad soon? Um, listen, she's had a fantastic journey. You know, um, obviously played at a, a really good school out in, out in the US um, as well and has wanted to, to look to chase her dream and put herself obviously over in Italy and has a professional contract. So I am sure that, you know, potentially moving forward, whether it's Stuart McLaren or whoever the next new national team coach is, it'll be somebody that, you know, is definitely, um, or they have their eye on um, because at the end of the day, succession planning is absolutely key well she is certainly one to watch but if we do go back to today's game because it's it's huge as we come to the end of the season if we even go back to some of the goals i mean sarah ewan she is just a player who, who you could celtic can rely on yeah definitely i mean i think she's sitting now with 12 12 goals scored um, in this campaign and a big part of you know the first round of fixture she was actually out out injured you know so that's obviously commendable, but um, I think, you know, today her movement was fantastic and the awareness of, as to where the defender is um, and the way that she's rolled her. It was a very, very good finish for Sarah. A bit of fortune for Celtic's second goal, though, the own goal. I mean, for Forfer to be letting ones like that in, it's just not good enough at this level. No, it's not, but what I would say from a Celtic perspective is when you play with that continual pressure, sometimes the luck goes for you, and that looks to me as to, as to what's happened for that second goal today. A couple of other uh, goal scorers on the score sheet today. I mean, even Anna Philby, just straight before the end of that first half there. Again, she's a player who we've watched kind of develop even over the past couple of yeah, months. Yeah, I think for me, she's actually been a really key sign-in for Celtic. We spoke earlier about, obviously, Natalie Ross being unavailable for the second and third um, round of fixtures, and Philby, for me, is really complete midfielder in terms of the defensive quality she brings but she's so keen um, to be part of that attack and influential as she has been today. And Chloe Clay Craig sorry with her ninth goal of the season again it's great to see her getting on the score sheet because again just like Sarah Ewan she's a, a Celtic player who they can totally rely on. Yeah absolutely and I think Chloe will, will be really kind of pleased with, with how she's um, added not only to goals scored by Celtic this season, but I think she's had quite a few number of assists as well. Yeah. Even today, I mean, in her pre-match press conference this week, she said that Champions League football would be a dream for her. It's within reach now. It certainly is. Um, you know, looking at today's game and the first half performance, I would, I would expect Celtic to go on um, and score more. So, you know, everything's within their own hands. So, you know, that's the place that you want to be in. Well, Lauren Perry, she's made some good saves today. It could have been more, though. Yeah, it could have been more, but, you know, she's she's a keeper that I've seen quite a few years back now with um, the Northern Ireland Under-17 team, and I think she has fantastic potential. And, you know, she's been a key player for four for this season. I think, you know, across the next few weeks, she might find herself out of contract. But, you know, if, if I'm with an SWPL1, then... I would definitely have eyes on her, you know, if, if her intention is not to stay with her for next season. Well, that's the thing. She does have great potential, but when you actually, when you look at the stats and how ma many goals for her have conceded this season, it's now up to 77. Yeah, I mean, obviously statistics are important, but I don't think they're everything. And I think, you know, if somebody was to look at um, Lauren Perry and look at, you know, what she has done in a positive light, I think that that maybe changes um, the outlook or the bigger picture. What do you think we can expect to see from Celtic in the second half? We're just seeing that the team's coming back out now. Um, I think what's really important is they stay or they maintain the intensity that they're playing at and also try and, and remain to show variation in their attacking style of play and don't become one-dimensional or frustrated when things don't come off if they really want to put the pressure on Glasgow City. And what about Forfer? What can they do to stay in the game, even to, to make sure they don't concede so many goals in the second half? 
Um, I think if I'm Kevin, it's about being organised, compact and disciplined, um, not becoming frustrated and potentially starting the second half if it's, as if it's 0-0 zero, zero again. Great, thanks, Paul. Well, we'll let you get no back problem. up to your commentary position because the second half is just about to get underway in a couple of minutes. It's currently uh, Celtic, sorry, 5 4 for Farmington nil. Here's our commentator, Stuart Mitchell. Thanks, Iona. And we did see at half time Kevin McGreskin just having a word with a few of the players warming up, and there will be a few changes over there on that far side. We can see Beth Mowat in the goalkeeping kit over there alongside Zoe Bruce and Rachel Neve. So the change being made by Kevin McGreskin as he looks to give some minutes to the younger players, maybe with a look towards next season, something that Pauline and Iona touched on at half time for Celtic though. Everything is going wonderfully at the moment. So not too much to concern Fran Alonso and his Celtic side as we just wait on referee Alistair Grieve and his assistants going through the formalities with the substitutes Celtic on the charge for more goals they know if they can add to their tally and get into double figures this afternoon they could potentially have Maybe an hour or so at the top of the table ahead of Glasgow City kicking off. As we see the changes being made now. Rachel Neve and Zoe Bruce onto the field of play. And just get some confirmation of who's made way. We do know that Lauren Perry, of course, will be sitting out the second half after being heavily involved, making saves, but also having to pick the ball out of the back of the net on five different occasions. Beth Mowat coming onto the field of play, stepped in for Lauren Perry on Wednesday night against Rangers. A good performance despite losing four goals. It was her first full four for Farmington start and rounds off the week with a second 45 here at K Park. If referee Alistair Grieve allows us to do so, that is. But Polly McDonald's joined me again back in the commentary booth. So, second 45 ahead, I just mentioned there what the goal difference could come into play at the end of the season, but even for the end of this afternoon, that would be something that could potentially give Celtic that little bit more hope if they just see themselves at the top of the table before Glasgow City kick off. Yeah, definitely, and you know, it's, it's, it's not unrealistic to think that that might be the case given what we've seen um, in the first half, but like I say, I think what's really important is just that Celtic maintain doing the things or the fundamentals that they've done well in the first half, you know, and don't start to maybe play as individuals and also rely on, on that, that variation in attacking play, which I think has been the problem um, in terms of Borfer being able to defend. Celtic and Lisa Robertson about to get us underway for the second half. Fran Alonso's instructions will have been quite clear to his players at half time. Kevin McGreskin will be looking for four for Farmington. And the younger players introduced to just hold Celtic off and look to create some chances in attack. But Celtic looking to start quickly yet again. Chloe Craig down for Donaldson. Had that chance in the first half. But she hit over the bar. Hayes. Moving forward, looking for Lee. Donaldson ahead. Just has to check the run. Mariah Lee looking to get the cross in, but Leah White blocks. Celtic have the throw. Chloe Craig for Donaldson. Trying to lift that one over. Sometimes for looking at Celtic, Pauline, sometimes the halftime break can be a little bit of a a hindrance that you've been running so well and things have been flowing that you have that 50 minute break and it can maybe take a bit of time to get going again in the second 45. Yeah, yeah I would agree but you know in terms of the level of professionalism of these players I would expect them like we've seen to start with the same um, intensity and, and look for the same outcome that they had in the first half. He's moving back. Clark. Opportunity for Bowie. Runs around McCafferty. Ball out of play. Goal kick awarded. You 
can hear Fran Alonso on the far side. Happy with the intent at the start of the second half. And Beth Mowat will have the goal kick for four for Farmington. Beth Mowat came in as a sub for Warren Perry late in the previous meeting at Station Park between the two sides when Celtic were 8-0 victors. Get a bit more time under her belt and goal this afternoon. Nice Kilbride. Clark looking for Philby. Touches it back for Bowie. Perry has to move to collect. Hayes. Loops it over looking for Rachel Donaldson. And for Lee. Chloe Craig there to help. Lee in space. Cut out by Leo White. And the ball out for a corner kick to Celtic. And Lisa Robertson will step over to take. But good defending again from Leo White. She picked up the yellow card in the first half. But she's been quite consistent on that side. Just not diving into challenges yeah. under the risk of that booking. No, she's done very well at the start of the second half. And, you know, and, and blocked two crosses um, for her team. It'll be short. Robertson goes long, looping towards the front post. Headed away. Neve there to try and help it on. Philby steps in. Cut back. Ryan trying to clear. Jacinta coming in as well. A four for Farmington get it away. It's good work by Philby there, but just unfortunately nobody in, in that central area to, um, to finish things off. Just having a look on the, the field of play from those half-time substitutes, it looks like it was Charlotte Gammy and Cheryl Kilcoyne of the two to make way with Zoe Bruce and Rachel Neve taking their places outfield Kelly Clark for Celtic Philby closed down by two chance for Erin Rennie to move away with the ball Neve just stepped a little bit too far forward he's intercepted Chloe Craig now and Celtic get it past White this time doesn't go past Zoe Bruce and Cowper claims for the goal kick and the officials agree four for Farmington Holding strong at the moment in the start of the second half. Kevin McGreskin happy with the first few minutes from his changes, Pauline? Um, it'll be happy at the way that they've defended in the final third, but I think for me, just prior to that last Celtic attack, I think it was a young girl, Neve, um, who just who fails to come towards the ball and the Celtic player steps ahead of her and you know, at this level of the game, that's where the, the, the more experienced players round about are need to help her. Lee giving chase there. Cowper clearing. And Celtic in a dangerous position with the throw. Captain Cassie Cowper for four for Farmington. Ewins back towards goal. Finds Chloe Craig in lots of space. She could hit it from that range off the bar. Ewins there. Can she finish? Sarah Ewins can and it's a second of the afternoon for Sarah Ewins and a 13th league goal of the season and with just over five minutes going in the second half Celtic make it six Celtic six four for Farmington now great play again by Celtic Chloe Craig moving into that central area because um, there's no reason for them to keep three at the back and, and probably deserves a goal from her effort there but um, yeah good awareness and good finish second phase from um, Sarah Ewins Probably just the perfect start again to the second half um, for Celtic. Well, Sarah Ewan's improving on the one goal she scored in the 8-0 win at Station Park between the two earlier this month. Two this afternoon for Sarah Ewan's six for Celtic. And still just under 40 minutes remain in the second half. Jacinta challenging Cowper. Celtic allowed to continue, Bowie trying to get the ball across and there was roars from the 4 for Farmington technical area on the far side wanting the free kick for the challenge on the defender by Jacinta but 4 for Farmington now with the corner to try and defend They maybe have a, they maybe have a point there <laughs> You can feel the energy as, as Tegan Bowie picks up the ball in the second phase they're coming from the Celtic bench as well and I think that you know that will 
be trying to ensure that they maintain the intensity and really try and, uh, and make a difference in terms of the, the goal difference between He's them there. and Glasgow City. Saved by Millet. Probably should be a seventh there, if I'm honest. One of those at the point blank range, it's maybe a little bit difficult to direct it towards the goalkeeper, or has that been too kind? That's been too kind. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> A good save for Beth Mowat to just help her confidence a little bit after losing that goal to Sarah Ewans. Celtic on fire this afternoon against Forfar Farmington. Cowper preventing that one getting through temporarily. Jacinta and Mowat collects again. Delivery just not quite right from Jacinta that time. No, she does well to get beyond, but I think for me she needs to get her foot around it and kind of pull it more back. Um, to, towards the line of the strikers as opposed to um, into the goalkeeper's hand there. Tenth appearance today for Jacinta Calabada Arachi. Bowie. Looking to go to McCafferty. It's there cut out by White. Jacinta's there blocked. Bruce tries to clear and gets it away at the second attempt. Craig right there. And Bruce once more hits that field. Hannah Stewart. Just looking to hold things up at the moment. Neves making the right run towards the penalty area. And Stewart can't get past the combined duo of Robertson and Clark. Really difficult for Hannah Stewart there. You can see, I think it's just Neve that, that's running through the middle, trying to support, but really difficult, finding it really difficult to get the rest of the team up the pitch in time. And she's she's surrounded um, as well in terms of the Celtic jerseys. Kuiper White and Bruce doing that well with that previous attack. Another to defend here. White will try and let the ball run out of play and does so successfully. Yeah, young defenders made some good decisions today and I'm sure that that will probably be one of the positives for uh, Kevin McCreskin today. And Alonso's instruction you feel would have been to go for more goals in the second half. There's one to add from the 5-0 lead the home side had at half time. Now it's clearance helped on by Patterson. Celtic come forward once more. Donaldson finds Jacinta. A little bit of space. Ewan's at the back post. Lee on the edge of the area. Good defending again from Lisa Ryan. Celtic throw. You can see the urgency from the home side. Celtic don't look like a team that are 6 0 up with the pace they're trying to restart play. Here's Mariah Lee. Can she cut it back? Cleared away over the touchline by Charlotte Taylor. And for for Farmington just defending in the right places at the moment. Yeah, definitely. But for me, I think, you know, Celtic need to look to get runs across the face of the goal in that situation there. I think, it's, is it maybe Hayes? And I'm not sure who the other Celtic player is, but I think for me, their positioning is wrong um, to get on the end of the cutback. Only Rachel Johnston and Tegan Bowie are not in the box for this Celtic corner. Philby's making her way in there from the short option. Hayes at the back. Headers high into the sky. Lee back across, away from Cowper. Philby tries. Craig looking to keep it in. It's done so. Ewins is there also. And Lisa Ryan just happy to get up field. Bowie for Rachel Donaldson. He's in an unusual position. It's a good delivery, though. Jacinta just can't get there. Rennie to McCafferty. Stewart touches on to Rennie. Four for Farmington, bodies forward here, but the pass just ahead of Charlotte Taylor. And Stewart can't get across there. Little glimmers there from four for Farmington when they clear the ball upfield and try to go on the attack. Yeah, that was a positive pattern of play. Again, it just falls down or, or falls down in terms of that final um, execution. But, you know, they still had a fair distance to cover even if they had maintained uh, possession of the ball there Mariah Lee Cowper comes across Lee rides the challenge well looks to cut it back again and just off the knee of Lisa Ryan at the front post and Celtic edging closer and closer to a seventh it's well defended there uh, by Lisa Ryan it's a really positive uh, run by Lee but I think for me you know unopposed she needs to be able to pick out um, a teammate in the box Celtic have mixed it up a little from the first half attacks. They're having some joy down the right side. Another corner towards Hayes. Make that just dip. Lee's there and again prevented by Leah White at that post. 
don't think she knew too much about the clearance, but she was in the right position. Right place, right time, as she was for the previous one also. Robertson will repeat with the corner. Looking for Clark. There's a touch. Farfar tried to get it away. Craig there as well. Cowper clears eventually. Ball bounces. Headed across. That's lovely. And it's touched in by Mariah Lee. It was Chloe Craig with the inventive work. And she kept the play alive. Beth Mowat couldn't collect. And Mariah Lee was there. And she gets a second goal of the afternoon as well. And it's now Celtic 7 for, for Farmington now. Ridiculous to see a fullback or centre back try an overhead kick there. But uh, pays off for Celtic. And as you say, yep, they make it 7. And Celtic, like we mentioned earlier, if they can keep adding these goals, they may have a short spell at the top of the SWPL1 table before Glasgow City kick off this afternoon against Spartans. There's still time for Fran Alonso and his side. Four for Farmington haven't been able to create much to trouble Rachel Johnston in the Celtic goal. He's moving forward for Philby. Philby looks for Donaldson. White trying to get the foot in. Donaldson will have space now. Back towards Hayes. Jacinta takes it off the toes and tries the spectacular. And it just goes over and wide. But Celtic, each time they put the ball in the back of the net, they just take more and more momentum, Pauline. Yeah, it's, it's a very relentless um, performance. But, you know, that's what we would expect given the, the position that they currently sit. There was a little bit of a conversation just down to right off the screen as Cassie Cowper speaks with Leah White. I think she took a bit of a sore one in that challenge. The left back's been heavily involved. Joined Forfa, only five years old, said in an interview ahead of the season that she remembers Tuesdays were training days, Saturdays, or match days, her favourite days of the week. She's been involved in nearly everything defensively for four for Farmington this afternoon, so some tired legs there as well, but a little bit of a treatment to the head. We'll just pause while the defender gets the treatment to remind you, 10 past four this afternoon on BBC Albert, Spartans against Glasgow City. You can watch that after we finish here in East Kilbride as everything tightens up and gets more and more dramatic towards the end of this SWPL1 season. Also, Hibernian 2-0 winners against Hearts earlier this afternoon, so there's also that little bit of a battle for fourth spot. Spartans are leading the way at the moment as it stands, two points ahead of Hibs. And that'll be an interesting one to watch as well. And then down towards the bottom, Motherwell in sixth place with 12 points. Celtic's opponents today, four for Farmington with 11. Hearts at the bottom on seven. And just teams looking to cement their final positions. But Celtic well, well on course to doing the job that they set out to do this afternoon. And now looking to go for an eighth goal. Bowie in the exchange. Ewan's turns Taylor. Bursting towards the touchline. Options to cut it back. And good work there to get back from Lisa Ryan. Yeah, it's very good defensive play there and really positive running um, by Sarah Ewan's, which really says everything about today's um, Celtic performance. You know, the energy, the determination, and like we spoke about, the relentlessness to, to get over the line and, and, and put themselves in the best position they possibly can. For for Farmington brought everyone back into their final third for this corner. Only Tiga Bowie stands alone just in front of the halfway line. Header from Hayes, right into the hands of Beth Mowat. And after scoring her goal on Wednesday night against the Bernian, you think that header's a glorious opportunity for to add another Celtic goal to the count. Yeah, definitely anywhere else apart from the goalkeeper, and it, it's probably a goal there, Stuart. Mowat did well to hold on. Taylor can't get the ball past Robertson. 
the centre. And he does well to control. She moves across to this near side, allows Chloe Craig to make the run. Patiently gives the ball back to Caitlin Hayes. Robertson. I'm going to look for Donaldson. Flags up just to her right. Rachel Donaldson didn't know her back was to the assistant. And Celtic nearly in again. Mowat to take the goal kick. Looking towards Neve. Robertson steps in. Celtic right in to win the ball again. McCafferty trying to get the ball forward for Taylor. Ewins cuts it out. It's now Kelly Clark. Caitlin Hayes. Over the top. Jacinta takes, Donna Patterson in to move away with the ball. Has she overrun? Raya Lee digging away and the free kick goes for for Farmington's way. Right oh, decision there, think was, no, I'm not sure there was too much in it there. I think there was a little bit um, from both. Donna Patterson maybe just tries a little too much there to try and run the ball out of defence. She's down at the moment. And just a bit of a reminder of how the afternoon has, afternoon has played out for Forfar Farmington. There will be more treatment required. There will be tired legs. And amongst the visitors as well, Pauline, not only from the amount of running, the amount of defending that they've had to do, because at times it has been attack after attack from Celtic. Yeah, it, it definitely has. The majority of the game has been played in Forfar's half. And I think, you know, for me, teams probably in the, the, the bottom three or, or four places within the league, the back-to-back -back games and the intensity of the schedule across the, the second and third round of fixtures is, has been really, really challenging. And it's not what for, for Farmington we want to see. We know from earlier games in the 2020 part of the season, Kevin McGreskin's having a bit of a tough job on his hands at Station Park this season since taking over from Ryan McConville. They have lost some players as well that we are used to seeing. Catherine Pender thinking also in defence as well, Pauline. You know, Jade Lindsay, Kirsty Fraser, they've all left the club sort of for different reasons. I mean, Kirsty Fraser obviously leaving to pursue other opportunities. And Jade Lindsay, we saw a lot of it at the start of the season as well, has been unavailable recently for, for, for Farmington. And they were big parts of what they were building up at Station Park in the early part of the season. Yeah, they definitely were. And, you know, obviously we're, we're unsure as to what the reasons are surrounding that, but probably something that the club has to look at um, moving forward because a very, very high um, turnover of personnel and that's not something that, that potentially looks good in the uh, uh, for the game or allows you to, to really put in consistent performances when it's such a significant um, turnover of personnel. There's Donna Patterson makes her way off on the far side. Change will be made with Alex Sadler coming on to take her place and Donna Patterson's been a huge, huge part of this for, for Farmington team as well this season. Nine league goals. Young but such an experienced player in a different position this season moving from defence more into midfield and obviously scored here in the 2-2 draw in December as well. Such a big part of Kevin McGreskin's side. Yeah, she is. She's a natural leader and obviously a very experienced. You know, she played, I think, four or five years of youth national team football, um, which definitely helps. And yeah, it, it'll be extremely disappointing for them. Like you say, she's moved up to, to play a, a central midfield role for her team um, to help them out, given the current Jacinta situation in. that they've been in. Now it comes out. Jacinta goes to ground. A couple of shouts. And the referee... Alistair Grieve points for the goal kick. Again, that long ball just centre, just trying to get there in the penalty area. And Beth Mowat does well, has a swipe at it with the right foot. And, and the goalkeeper's timing's good and it makes it difficult um, for Jacinta there, but I think there actually was a little uh, nudge in the back by the forward defender also that maybe puts her off. So for for Farmington, breathe again. It's Beth Mowat. She's someone who spoke about how much working with experienced players like Donna Patterson and Alana Bruce 
has helped her on and off the pitch, and that's two experienced players that Forfar Farmington have lost to injury this afternoon. As Rachel Neve looking to spring an attack for the visitors. Hazen Robertson, control for Celtic. He's again, Mariah Lee, just into her head. Loops the ball over for Philby, tries to take it first time. She possibly might have had the touch and set herself up. It's a fantastic ball in though, isn't it? Um. Crossover, Mariah Lee's there, headed away by Leah White. And again, Stewart's touch, a little heavy. Philby for Bowie. Has options in the middle. Cut out once more by Lisa Ryan. Celtic have yet another corner. Lisa Ryan again has been a key key player for for, for Farmington in their back line today. She's made some really crucial um, interceptions and read uh, the danger uh, very well on several occasions. Philby will float it in. Lisa Robertson there as a short option. Towards Kelly Clark. Opportunity missed for me there. Has to get that on target. It's a free header. Celtic captain looking to add her name onto the score sheet. I think you just aim that ball downward beyond Beth Mowat. Maybe sees Could her name in lights there a little bit early, Stuart. There's 25 goals in her Celtic career. Captain Kelly Clark. Donaldson looking for Lee. Thinks about hitting it straight away. And might have been the wrong option. Had space to move forward and over the bar. Another lovely pass through for Mariah Lee. Just lacks composure in the finish for me um, and, and precision and probably tries to hit it as well with too much power. And that's probably what Celtic really don't want to see creeping into their game um, at this stage. I think, I think the concentration, the intensity, and and the, and the team play um, is what's important. Not about you know individual performances. Offside against say the Ewans. The challenge made by Alex Sadler, so it wouldn't have created anything. But near side assistant on our right raises the flag for for Farmington. Looking to get this ball up into the Celtic half. Give their defence a little bit of respite. Erin McCafferty stands over the ball. Appeared in the last three games. Her last appearance was back in December. So missed a number of matches. Taylor helps it upfield. Sadler gives chase. Rachel Johnston. Hayes. No closing down so she can pick the pass to Lee. Lee gives Caitlin Hayes the ball back. Again, a number of options forward. Lifted over Donaldson. Over her head. Hannah Stewart now for Forfar. Tries to touch onto Taylor. Difficult to take. And Celtic have it again. Forfar really struggling under pressure there, aren't they? That Celtic press comes upon them so, so quickly. Clark hit a blue wall. Ball now forward for Mariah Lee. Looking to work into a crossing position. Or will she try to go around? There's the delivery. Header from Ewens. And Beth Mowad saw it late and tried to collect good reactions but concedes the corner. Fantastic individual play there by Mariah Lee. Really persistent in terms of, you know, I want to make a difference. I want to make an impact here. Um, she played a big part since arriving at Celtic. It was a tenth appearance on Wednesday, and she started seven of the last eight. She only missed me, the victory against yeah, Harps. I think for me, she's definitely looked far more confident in this third round of Philby. fixtures, Stuart. Doesn't direct that one towards goal. And Celtic now able to make the changes. Looks like Rebecca McAllister and Izzy Atkinson. For Rachel Donaldson. And Jacinta looks to be the other player making way. So time being spread around the Celtic side. 
at 7-0, job done. And Fran Alonso can start to look towards the final match against Motherwell and try and get a little bit of rest for some of his players. But you never know what starting 11 the manager's going to go with. He likes to change things around. He has different options. We've saw him play with wingers at wing back as well this season in the hunt for goals. And that may come into his mind. That's lovely from Lisa Robertson. See the Ewans trying to keep the ball in play. I think given the way they've recruited Stuart, they're in a privileged position in terms of the depth they have um, in their squad. So, yeah, the deployment of personnel can change on a week-to-week -week basis, but I also think that, you know, that really drives competition within the Celtic squad. Alex Sadler blocking the cross on Bowie. Returning, sees Hayes. She thought about it. Has to pick a pass. Lee's there. It's looping and collected by Mowat. Mowat lifting towards Bruce. Atkinson picks up McAllister. Ewins can allow players to move forward. But Ewins goes for the shot on a hat trick. Blocked low. Hayes. The Celtic a full side almost stepping up into the four for Farmington. Final third. Delivery to the back. Ewins there. Good just ball in. Right. Worked down the right there by Chloe Craig. And I think just ever so slightly too high for Sarah Ewins to get a head on goal or even back across the face. Good cross from Chloe Craig. Ewan's rising. They just can't get above the ball to find the direction. It's just falling straight to Celtic. Ball through for Bowie. Ryan's there. Clears away for the throw. Good combination player down the left as well there for Celtic. And good to see Rebecca McAllister getting really positive early touches. Um, since she's entered the field of play. Here's Ewins again. Tries to cut it back to McAllister. The foot just in at the last moment to prevent the shot. Bowie. Does well to recycle it for her team. Hayes. Anna Stewart doing the defensive work. Hayes can turn, finds Philby. Philby through for Lee. Back across goal and straight past everyone. It just needed a touch to try and direct it into the back of the net. But out it goes and the danger passes. I think maybe the, just the pace on the ball there deceives everyone, um, Stuart. Celtic almost 15 minutes away from adding another three points to their tally. Will there be more goals? Ewan straight into the diving, Beth Mowat. I don't think it's set up for a shot there for Sarah, or if it is, it's going to be a side foot to the far corner for me. Upfield towards Neve over the top of the four for attack. Hannah Stewart steps in. Options in front from Taylor and Neve. Does well, looking to find the pass, but straight to the feet. Kelly Clark. Ball forward looking for Atkinson. Cowper clears. I think even if it gets through there, Stuart, she's offside. She just tends to run a little bit early for me. Fran Alonso almost on the pitch to help out there, giving the ball back. You want Celtic to keep going. And Hayes has space to keep going. Looking for Ewans. Cowper clears again. Robertson turns for Clark. Looking for Bowie. And the ball ricochets off the Celtic forward and out for the goal kick. It's just starting to feel as we edge towards the final 14 minutes. Pauline 
that Forfar can't quite get the ball out of their own half and then there's quite a number of players just sitting in those two lines in front of the penalty area. Yeah, I think, um, you know, that it's, it's the season, as we say, has been energy zapping um, for, for this team and I think potentially now they're, they're more than happy just to sit in that low block and see the game out, Stuart, which will make it more difficult for Celtic, you know, to find the spaces um, to, to play in. Or for Farmington did travel to Rangers not that long ago and conceded 11 goals, which is something they want to avoid, something like that happening again this afternoon against a Celtic side that certainly mean business. Clap for Hayes. Robertson. Is he Atkinson? It's about the shot off Cowper. White clears. It's high and just to the back of the penalty area though. Will be with the touch. Turns and good save again by Beth Mowat. She's had a lot thrown at her for coming on as a substitute goalkeeper, but she's handled most of it. Yeah, she definitely has. Um, really interesting to see Anna Fulby in terms of the number of opportunities she's had today. And I think for her, she really wants to, to add another one to her name before this game is finished. Anna Stewart. It's Lisa Robertson now for Celtic. Lee ahead. Has she broke the outside trap? Bearing down on goal, off the post. Nobody there to pick up the rebound. Robertson takes over. Lee again, her cross off the back of Leah White. Robertson closed down by Neve. Celtic can't get it in at the moment. He's to Craig, off Ryan. But a miscommunication between the defender and the goalkeeper. And the referee has pointed to the spot for the penalty to Celtic. There were claims for handball on the far side. And Alistair Grieve agrees. And it's a perfect opportunity for Chloe Craig to step up for her second of the game and to make it eight for Celtic. The referee sets the instructions for the audience behind Chloe Craig. We've seen her put these away so many times this season. Can she make a date? She can. Sends Beth Mowat the wrong way. And Celtic go for the ball as they want to add more. It's now Celtic 8. Four for Farmington now. I think if my memory serves me correct, the Stuart one more would put them on equal goal difference with Glasgow City. Is that correct? That's right. So as it stands, Celtic would need 10 goals to put them a goal in front of Glasgow City on goal difference and with just over 10 minutes remaining just under 10 minutes remaining will Celtic be able to do that and add a bit more pressure onto Scott Booth and his side before they kick off against Spartans remember 10 past 4 on BBC Alibut you can watch that one after we finish here at K Park Rebecca McAllister Good tidy play again from the young youth international player. And Heather Wide and Caitlin Hayes. A difficult, difficult opportunity there for Caitlin Hayes. I think for me, probably to try and go back across the goal might have been a better option. Now it's upfield, looking towards. Bruce, but Atkinson is there. Philby, can she add over the top? Cleared away. McAllister taking it down. Robertson for Ewans. Across goal. Philby's there. It's touched and stopped on the line, but Philby there to poke home into the back of the net. And Celtic are not letting up here. Hannah Philby scores another for the afternoon, and it's another for Celtic. It's now Celtic 9, 4 for Farmington now. Good ball by uh, Lisa Robertson there, and for me, it's really good perseverance and a ball, good ball by Sarah Ewans into a dangerous area. And again, it's just that relentless of the Celtic players and Philby to get the ball over the line. 
So, as it stands, Celtic are now level on goal difference with Glasgow City up at the top of the SWPL1 table. And one more goal in the next eight or so minutes would send them to the top. If that happens, Pauline, would that be something that Scott Booth and Glasgow City will pay attention to before they kick off in Edinburgh? They'll probably say no, but I think actually in the back of their minds, yeah, it definitely is a yes. And we know that, you know, Spartans will not be an easy side for Glasgow City to face today, given especially that it's at Ainsley Park and not Broadwood. Chloe Craig moving forward. Two goals this afternoon. Looking for Mariah Lee. Can she get there? Merritt there first. And swipes that one out of play. Good work by the young goalkeeper there, but I think for me, Mariah Lee, just a decision making is maybe interrupted there, or actually, it may be the, the pull of the shirt by Cassie Cowper. Atkinson. Craig. Hayes. Hayes has played a really good, a lot of good balls today, hasn't she, in terms of penetrating passes through the, through the middle of the 4 4 team quality of some of her passing has been tremendous here's Bowie across Felby with the touch and that just flashes across the goal line the flag is up on the near side from the assistant so it wouldn't have counted but yet another attack and another deadly cross from Celtic yeah it was and again you see the numbers that they're thrown into the box absolutely desperate to, to get that 10th goal and as you say put themselves um, at the top of the table And Alonso with another clap of encouragement towards his side. Morfer can't get it out. Robertson for Ewins. Will there be a hat trick for a Celtic player? Sarah Ewins caught by Beth Mowat. And again, the young goalkeeper makes the save. I thought she was going to cut in on her right foot all, all day long there, but it just didn't open up for her. Just there. She has conceded four goals in this second half, Beth Mowat, but I do get the feeling that Kevin McGreskin will take a slight positive from the saves that she has made and some of the phases of defending from Forfar, although the scoreline might not suggest it. But there is a gap between the two sides which I have to take into consideration this afternoon. Atkinson, charged down. It's been a tough afternoon. Four for Farmington. Atkinson delivers. Ewan's at the back with the header. And in it goes. And Celtic have that 10th goal. And that will move Celtic up to the top of SWPL1 as it stands. It's now Celtic 10, 4 for Farmington 0. It's a fantastic delivery by Atkinson there. I think we've seen on several occasions that she really wants to come onto her left foot. And it's been blocked uh, the previous two occasions. But yeah, really puts it on a plate there for, for Sarah Ewan's to to attack and as you say 10-0 Celtic and that is a hat trick for Sarah Ewins it may be shadowed a little bit by the greater meaning for the home side and Fran Alonso is ready to make a change a couple of changes as Jody Barto just waiting there to come onto the field of play and then London Pollard also in waiting she's just been taken back by the Celtic coaching staff in the meantime that one will be a little bit of a sore one to see her come onto the field of play for, for, for Farmington and their fans. The ex-attacker who started the season so well for Farmington. And Fran Alonso hasn't hesitated to put her on into the lineup since she signed. He's having to backtrack for that. Is he Atkinson? He's up towards Bartle. Will Celtic add more? They won't through the great work of Lisa Ryan getting across to prevent the delivery. Again, she reads the situation one. well, doesn't she? And, and, and does well for her team. Um, and probably one of the few experienced players left on the pitch um, for for for. Jody Bartle just recognising the good defensive work she is a player that knows that job. So just make sure the forfer defender is okay before moving to take her position in the penalty area. You could just see again 
Pauline described it earlier as a, an energy zapping performance from Celtic and that has happened to four for Farmington there's Hayes with the header and Lee was just gambling at the back post from the header but just couldn't get there in time I think by Hayes standards there she at least has to get that on target Stuart she's had a couple this afternoon hasn't she she has, and sometimes I've felt that, the, you know, the delivery that's come in has maybe been overhit as they've tried to hit that back post area, but that one falls nicely for her. And now London Pollard enters the field of play. Tegan Berry off. Looks like Izzy Atkinson's going to drop into that fullback area now. Just can't judge the bounce of the ball. Lee away, awaiting with the throw. Many trying to help it on, but nobody in front. For four for Farmington. Celtic again. He's up for Philby. He'll come through to Ewens. Will she get the chance? The flag is up. The ball's in the back of the net, but offside from the assistant once again. And Celtic just threatening on that final line of the forward defence. Just over enthusiastic there uh, by Sarah Ewens. Uh, we know the pace that she has, and she really doesn't need to, to have that advantage. Just a couple of minutes left. He's trying to get the ball out from her feet. Rachel Neve there to pressure. Taylor does the same on Robertson. The Celtic midfielder finds the pass. Sarah Ewens, she's got a lot of space here. Oh, through for McAllister. Leaves for Pollard. Still looking for her first Celtic goal. Robertson hits it. Saved by Mowat. McAllister might be there. And Ryan clears. Great effort by Robertson um, there and Rebecca, good to see her trying to get in and, and convert from the second phase, but again, Lisa Ryan clears lines well for, for, for Framington. Hayes, Ewan's looking for Hayes again. Philby now tries to move and that one's high and wide and it looked like it was about to burst the back of the net again from Anna Philby. It certainly did. She manipulated the wall ball well to get the shot off, given how congested it is in that 18-yard box now. Just bouncing around in the penalty area. Celtic looked to bring it down. Philby moved it onto the right foot. Rennie takes possession inside for Stewart. Neve ahead. She'll find Alex Sadler instead, looking for Neve. Celtic will continue. Atkinson. Philby. Robertson battles with Rennie. McCafferty sends it forward. Neve giving chase on Hayes. The header. Puts her in trouble. And he waits on support. Zoe Bruce inside for Hannah Stewart. Options on the right if she can work the ball through the space. Taylor there as well. Taylor goes down. Referee has a look and continues. Lisa Ryan steps in now. Is there something here for Far for Farmington? Ryan waits for Sadler. It's Ryan again, but the flag up from the assistant and it breaks down for the visitors. And the referee will go to check on Charlotte Taylor. He's back on her feet now. You can see the challenge there. Right up till the end. Both sides still battling. So credit to Forfar Farmington. The heads will be low, conceding the 10 goals. But they'll hope to just see it through as it stands. Sarah Ewens, London Pollard. Taking the ball on, but the whistle goes. And the flag up again from the assistant referee on this right side. And that may be the end to the scoring for Celtic. But it would say, Pauline, 
before the game, not many people may have predicted the 10 goals which would put Celtic in the position they're in now. Oh, Three I'd points were the most important. Yeah, I'd agree. I think sometimes when you start to focus on, you know, number number of goals scored, the, the, the play or, or the game plan becomes forgotten about and, and, and players become kind of play more as individuals than, than collectives. So I think, you know, overall, Fran will be absolutely delighted. You know, five first half and they continue to go on um, and show the same sort of uh, relentlessness in the second half and, and, and lots of different scorers coming from, from all over the field also. And it will be another clean sheet for Rachel Johnston. There'll be seven appearances, seven clean sheets for her Celtic career. She's been an incredible run, starting four of the last five matches. And four clean sheets in that time, but four for Farmington. Might help the curse of the commentator here if he can try and get the ball forward with whatever remains in the second half. It's been a tiring afternoon for the visitors. It's been a delightful afternoon for Fran Alonso. If I'm honest, probably one of the better performances that we've seen some, from Celtic or at, here at K-Park, because I do think sometimes they like to play an expansive game of football and sometimes the dimension of the pitch, um, depending on the opponent, can, can hinder that. Look at Rachel Johnston trying to get things going quickly again. Celtic don't want to stop. Hayes has found Bartow in space. London Pollard in the middle. Late runs also. Bartow behind. Phil be saved by Mowat. Mariah Lee gets the shot away and it just goes wide. McAllister was waiting also. And that opportunity passes for the home side. Good save with the young goalkeeper with a foot there. He's had a couple of lows as well in the second half. She certainly has, and do you know what? It's not an easy game to come into. You know, when you've sat and watched for 45 minutes, or, or yeah, 45 minutes it was, you know, in terms of the Celtic's dominance, possession, and the number of attacking opportunities. Celtic again. Lee finds Philby. Can she get the shot away? Blocked again. Cleared away by McCafferty. As the sun starts to shine brightly here at K Park, and certainly shining on Celtic. Ewins. Hayes smashes it towards goal and that's another good save by Beth Mowat to prevent Celtic from making it 11. <laughs> Celtic wanted to take the corner but the full time whistle goes from Alistair Grieve. And it's been a barrage of goals from the home side this afternoon. It didn't take Celtic long to get the scoring underway. Sarah Ewan's opening after five minutes. A second was added with an own goal from Alana Bruce. A difficult touch looped over her own goalkeeper, Lauren Perry, in the fourth for Farmington goal just after 10 minutes. Chloe Craig made it three with a header just before the half hour. And a few minutes after, Mariah Lee made it four just on the stroke of half time. Anna Philby stepped up to make it five. Sarah Ewens then a few minutes after half time made it six. Mariah Lee made it a double for her with seven. Chloe Craig also got in on the act with a double from the penalty spot. Philby then made it nine and Sarah Ewens sealed the victory with a hat trick. And that was the 10-0 victory for Celtic. And that put Celtic onto 50 points with a goal difference of 56. One ahead of Glasgow City who kick off at 10 past four against Spartans. You can see that on BBC Alba. But at East Kilbride at K-Park, it's finished this afternoon. Celtic 10, four for Farmington nil. Well, it's certainly game on at the top of the table after that 10-0 win for Celtic. Five goals in the first half, five goals in the second half. Pauline, Celtic were just relentless today. It was attack after attack. Yeah, they definitely were. And I think probably for Fran Alonso, he probably really couldn't have asked um, for much more. I think, you know, the way they approached the first half in terms of the intensity of play, uh, the variation in their attacking play and also very clinical in front of goal and they went to continue that on in the second half and that's not always an easy thing to do. And we knew that 10 goals would make the difference but for them to actually go out and, and score 10, did you predict that or expect that? Um, no, I probably didn't. Um, I think, you know, when you have that sort of pressure kind of hanging over your head, uh, sometimes it can it can lead to a, actually disruption in the concentration um, of the players and the execution of the game plan. But, you know, all credit where credit's due. Um, it's not the easiest a pitch to play on either, 
when, when the weather is hot, but I thought the intensity that they played it throughout the 90 minutes was fantastic. Well, Sarah Ewan, she's a player we spoke about at halftime. She got her hat-trick today and that all-important 10th goal, which I, I suppose we were just waiting for because it could be so many more. Yeah, I think probably in terms of number of attacking opportunities, there was probably far more um, in the second half, and sometimes that actually led to the area becoming quite congested. But listen, absolutely delighted for Sarah. We spoke about it earlier, you know, the beginning of the season she had to sit out uh, due to injury and she's definitely came back and, and, and uh, put her name in the shop window also maybe for Scottish national team uh, placings moving forward. Well, it'll be interesting to see actually who steps up into that national team now because there's been some great performances. I mean, another player we spoke about at halftime was Chloe Craig and again another great second half for her. Yeah, and she'll probably feel a little bit aggrieved to actually have been taken off, you know, given her contribution in today's game. But I don't think Chloe should focus really um, on that being obviously in relation to her performance. I think from Fran's perspective, he wants everybody to feel involved. Um, and I think probably if I was the coach, I'd be doing the same thing. I'd be getting players on the pitch and, and continuing to build that momentum and competitiveness to take them into the final uh, game of the season. Well, they, the Celtic, they do just have that strength and depth, don't they? They've got quality across the whole field, which we saw today. I mean, <laughs> Forford didn't even really have a, a chance to attack. No, they didn't. And I think, you know, the, the early goal and then the unfortunate um, own goal that Forfar conceded, I think that Celtic really built on that and, and they were able to maintain the intensity, like I said, across um, both halves. And, you know, I, I really struggled to probably find an area or, that, or for Fran to find an area that, that he would be disappointed in with his team today. And for Forfar, uh, another tough result, so many goals conceded what do they do with their confidence where do they go from here um i think you know obviously not knowing what the the, the aim or the objectives were for them that's something that they need to now go back and, and reflect on um for me some of the positives potentially were i think they, just, they defended set plays well on occasions that were extremely aggressive um, and that's hard to do against a, a side that have the the aerial threat that celtic have um, I also think that, you know, if you look across the opportunities Celtic had, both goalkeepers did very, very well on occasions, you know. So there are definitely things there for for Forfar to build on. But I think the biggest thing for me is that they look at, you know, the turnaround in personnel that has happened this season. And that's something that they wouldn't, they won't want to happen um, next season if they want to, to develop, you know, or, or put on consistent performances. Great. Well, the Celtic head coach, Fran Alonso, joins us now. Fran, I was actually going to ask, I was actually even going to say you must be delighted, but I actually want to know just how delighted you are after that performance today. Yeah, I, I, feel, I feel like I'm getting very boring every time I'm delighted, <laughs> and delighted, but I have to be. I have to be. What a, what a, what a run of form. Uh, I'm so proud of, of the guy you saw today. Uh, a lot of heat um, and the, the focus during the, the, uh, the whole game and, you know, the quality and... Ah, is, is, is fantastic. I'm very proud of the girls. Uh, obviously, we've been all season on our own. Uh, you know, we know how good we were in training and our focus, our mentality. Uh, from outside, they came different feedback, but we, we focus on what we should be focused. And today, you know, obviously right now, um, we are sitting at the highest of the table, which is something I, you know, we couldn't believe a few a few months ago. And you know, now it's good because we put pressure on on the other the other two teams. Uh, and yeah. Um, and now we will enjoy the next two days. We need a big break of a couple of days uh, because it's been very tough, very many games. And then focus on, on you know, on a World Cup final for us, which is going to be against Motherwell. But you know, what opportunity for us to to to, to have an unbelievable season? So very I'm delighted. I'm, that's the right word. So thank you for using it for me. <laughs> well, the thing is, you knew before the match that ten goals would have moved you up into the top spot. And the players went out and they performed for you today, and they did that. Did you even expect before the match you could have? It could have ended in a ten nil. I, I so I talked to them before before the game. I told I told them girls, you know, I know we are, they are talking about Champion League, about the league. It's about three points. Last time we played in here, we dropped two points. It's about the three points. But at half time, of course, it changed because we had a fantastic first half. And then I say, girls, okay, uh, without being disrespectful toward the opponents, but we got the three points. So now you score five more goals. We we put massive pressure. Uh, so in, in your eyes, we are we are four nil down. And this is what, why we took the ball and, you know, we, we wanted, uh, we didn't know if we could, but we wanted definitely to give it a go. And, uh, well, well uh, they, they, they don't stop to surprise me every week. It's, it's fantastic. So, so yeah, uh, technically, obviously, we don't want, you know, we don't want to be disrespectful to our opponent, but uh, every time we score a goal in any game against any opponent, we want to go for more. 
you saw when we beat, uh, you know, Rangers, it's been always in the last 10 minutes, so the draw wasn't good enough for us. So this ambition, this, this winning mentality is something that I, I really uh, love in, in my team. Well, so many goal scorers ac across the park today. You must, again, be delighted with how they step up and, and finish. This is, this is what, what a, a, a top squad like we have, you know, uh, the girls, some of the girls, they didn't have the opportunity last game or the game before, and now they come here and it make, they make it very hard for me. Uh, so I play always 11 and I am so unfair on, on, on seven players and living on the bench. I even more unfair on some players, uh, a couple of players that are out of the squad. But this is what a team is about. It's about, you know, uh, when we are so on the bench, girls running from the bench to, to provide the ball to the opponent. So it's a, that's a team performance. Not the one playing, but the one outside, the one watching from the stands. And I'm delighted, I'm delighted. So uh, I don't care who scored the goals or who provide the goals. I, I saw today a team playing together with ambition and, and the quality today with the difficulties of the heat on the pitch. It was fantastic for me. I, I'm, yeah, it was brilliant, brilliant day for, for, for us. Well, Fan, earlier this season there was talk about it perhaps being a two horse race between Glasgow City and Rangers. You've then since gone on to prove that wrong as you sit at the top of the table, what, what would you say to, to people who were saying that back then? I would say, I don't want to be arrogant, but I would say we are the, the best third horse in a two-horse in a two horse race ever to be. So we have a pretty good third horse, so that's the only thing. I, 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 respect, I, I respect every, every opinion. Uh, you know, we, are, we know what, how we work, we know what, uh, the quality we got, uh, we know our strength and our weakness. And, you know, it's, it's great to be fair that, that, um, that there is this feedback. Some people, you know, we were winning the Champions League straight away and some people say, well, they are out of, you know, there are both, both uh, scenarios and for us it's all about the next three points and it worked until today. And today is the first day that the next game is not only about the three points because the league finished. So it's, all, it's obviously uh, chances of going into a dream of us, which is going to the next Champions League. And, you know, who knows? It's, it's, it's a big pressure. Uh, uh, Glasgow City, they need to win today and they need to beat Rangers. Uh, if they, or at least get a point from Rangers if they want to, um, to, win the, to win the league, assuming that we get the next three points, of course. So, uh, fantastic. I, I've been saying uh, for, for many months that this is the best league that we have for so many years. It's very competitive. For me, it was never a three-horse race. You know, Hibs, you see how they are playing. You know, very, very tough to play against them. Every team has to step up. Uh, you know, for far obviously today they didn't have a great game, but it, they played very well. Uh, the, uh, the last game against against Rangers, uh, Mother well has grown a lot, Hearts as well. So it's it's, uh, it's, it's fantastic for for the women game. Uh, so yeah, um, we are in the in the in the best position in my favorite position where we could be. Great. Well, thank you very much, Fran, and uh, a, a big weekend next weekend. But job well done today. Thank you, my guys. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Pauline, it is game on. <laughs> It most certainly is, and I think, you know, Celtic have done everything that they can um, to, put, to put pressure on Glasgow City. And, and you know, if I'm Fran as well, I'd be absolutely delighted uh, with the performance his team's put on today. But I also think that he should be proud of himself because I think the way that he rotates the squad and drives that competitiveness between players has helped them to, to get to the position that they're in just now. What will Glasgow City be thinking now, I mean, if they've maybe seen this result? going into today's game and then another big match for them next week against Rangers. Yeah, I think Scott Booth will just take it one game at a time. I think that's the all-important. And, you know, for Glasgow City, it, it's just about the three points, I would say, today. It's, it's just about ensuring that things are in their hands going into next week's game. And Celtic versus Motherwell next weekend. Celtic are away to Motherwell, but they'll be feeling confident, won't they, going into that now? Yeah, they will, and definitely after the run of form that they've shown and probably, you know, today's performance for me, potentially, it, it could have been quite sticky for them given the way that Forford defend, but to do it in the style they've done it, the intensity, the variation in play, and to score five goals across both halves, yeah, I, I think, you know, they'll just be wanting that game to come upon uh, them as quick as it possibly can. Great, thank you very thank much, you. Polly. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you also for joining us today too. It does go down to the final weekend next weekend, which is going to be a huge match day for everyone involved. Now, you can also watch Spartans versus Glasgow City live on BBC Alba this afternoon. Kickoff is at 10 past four. You can also watch highlights of all four of today's games on the BBC Scotland channel at quarter past eight. And do join us next weekend for live coverage of Motherwell versus Celtic. But until then, from all of us here at K Park today, have a very good afternoon.